Good morning, wicked friends, and welcome back to my channel, and welcome back to another Halloween DIY episode. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Subscribe, turn on the little notifications bell, and make sure it is set to all so that you receive all of our notifications. All right, so in today's video, I am gonna be doing another little project using up some vintage items that I have collected. Um, I am gonna use some salt shakers to make some cute little ornaments to put on my buffet table in my dining room. Now, in addition to the salt shakers, I'm gonna also be using some of my Halloween die cuts that come in the kit. The kit is list listed in my Etsy shop. I will put the link for that in the description below so you can go and check those out. Also, I have some specialty die cuts that are just for my Patreon members. So be sure to go check out my Patreon. The link for that will be in the description below. If you like doing any of my crafts and you like the, the items that I use and that I create, um, a lot of the digitals, you'll be able to get um, a good amount of them um, by becoming a Patreon member. All right, so I have, like I said, a handful of supplies here. I have my salt shakers. Um, I have three different ones. This is a green glass salt shaker. I have used the pepper shaker for storage for something else, but I am gonna use the salt shaker. Um, I like this one specifically because it's a little bit larger and I can do a little bit larger of like a decoration or display with this one. Um, but I also like the green color and I incorporate a lot of greens in my decor. So I like that this is gonna, you know, kind of coordinate with other things that I have in my decorating scheme for this fall. Um, then I have these two little small glass salt shakers. I got these at Goodwill bins. I don't know how old these are, um, but they're, you know, the little tiny glass ones. You can probably find something similar like to this um, at the Dollar Tree. Um, or use whatever salt shaker that you have. Um, now, the reason we're using salt shakers is because we're going to utilize the holes in the top of the salt shaker covers to um, have almost like a little bouquet of fun popping out of the salt shakers. I am going to start by figuring out what I want to use um, for each one of these little displays. Now, like I said, it's almost going to be like a little faux bouquet of cutouts or, or die cuts. And I'm gonna decorate each one up a little bit and then we'll have just kind of like some metal floral wire popping out with all of these different things on the top of them. So I have just some 26 gauge gold metal um, wire. I think this is like jewelry wire or floral wire or, or something like that. Um, you just want it to be strong enough to hold up whatever paper you're gonna use. So you can use something like this. I'm using the gold because I like the gold color, but you could also use the green floral wire, something like this. I actually might try the floral wire as well. The floral, floral wire is a little bit stiffer. This is 24 gauge. Um, so I might do like a couple of both just to like mix it up. Okay, and then in addition to those items, I'm gonna turn my hot glue on back here. I also have some other little decorating pieces. I have just a bunch of little resin charms, um, all kinds of different ones. You can get a lot of these at craft stores. I've gotten some at the Dollar Tree. I've ordered some online. Um, I know Hobby Lobby always has little resin charms like this. So I'm actually probably going to use these ones right here that I got from the Dollar Tree, these little leaves. I think these are really cute. So I might use a few of those. I have these candy corns. I used a candy corn in one of my previous DIYs that I did a live for. Um, we were making some treat bags. Here's the little treat bag and here is the little paper clip holder for the treat bag and I put a little candy corn on that. If you want to watch this video, it is, um, I'll link it below, but it is one of the previous lives that I did. Um, so we made this during that live. So you can go check that out. Um, yeah, so I've got these. I've also got another basket full of just Halloween decorating items here. I've got ribbon. I've got little, um, this small little tinsel. I will list this tinsel. You can get this on Etsy. I use this in a lot of my vintage crafts. So I have three different colors. I also have some orange. Um, these are the little pom-pom ribbon 
here I might use some of that. Okay, so I also have this black netting. It's that netting that is supposed to look like cobwebs. I've used it in a bunch of my other um, DIYs this season. So I'm gonna probably use some of that. I have some glow in the dark Rick Rack. I have some um, pipe cleaners, some like chenille pipe cleaners. I don't know, just random things here that I'm gonna use to decorate up some of these little pieces um, to make this bouquet. All right, so let's just get started and, and start putting some of these together. I'm going to pick out some different ones that I want here and figure out some size. All right, so I've picked out a few different die cuts that I want to use in one of my projects. I'm going to just work on one at a time. We'll start with the large one first. Um, I picked out a few like medium size pieces um, like this one right here and then this little trick or treat. Um, and then I picked out a few smaller pieces, which these are little um, vintage candy treat boxes or box covers. Um, and then this little sign, Beware of 31, a little ticket, and a little die cut vintage cat. Um, I tried to get a bunch of different shapes and sizes, so there was like a good variety of things happening in this little um, bouquet. I am going to go ahead and distress these up because I haven't yet done so. My Distress Ink I'm using is the Archival Ground Espresso. And I'm just going around on the edges um, of these. Now, um, most of these I've actually printed out and then cut on my Cricut. Um, I prefer to do that rather than fussy cut. Um, however, you can definitely fussy cut. It's not a big deal. I just am not a fan of fussy cutting. In addition to um, the fronts being, in addition to distressing the fronts, I'm actually gonna just go around and distress the backs as well um, because I don't like that bright, stark, white look of the paper, um, especially if you're gonna see the backs of these little pieces of paper. Now, I'll probably be adding something to it, but somebody asked me, they're like, well, why distress the back if you're gonna cover it up? Because um, very often, if I cover something up with like tinsel or something else, you'll still be able to see bits of the white pieces, and I don't want that bright white shining through or, you know, popping through the back. If it's distressed like this, it like looks continuously old. Okay, so that's that's what I'm doing. Just gonna distress all of these. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this one right here. I'm gonna use a little bit of my garland here. This is that little small garland. This garland happens to be um, in three pieces. So you can use it as a full piece or you can break it apart like this and use the individual pieces. And I'm gonna use an individual piece because it's a little bit finer and thinner. And I'm also gonna be using my Fabrifix glue for this. Um, just because it usually sticks on paper, fabric to paper, a little bit better. And I'm just going to go all around the outside edge with my little tinsel. We'll do three sides first, just so that way. Oops. Okay, so that way I'm not sticking my finger in the glue on the other side. Yeah, I'm just lining this little tag with this tinsel. Hot glue would work well also. Um, I just find that this glue is a little bit longer lasting than hot glue sometimes. And sometimes the hot glue melts the plastic in the little garland. So just going around there, we'll trim this off. All right, so now we have a cute little garland wrapped sign. And I think this needs something on the front right here. I was actually thinking one of these um, candy corns would be cute. So I'm gonna glue that. I am gonna hot glue that one though, because that one is a little bit bulkier. So we'll just put a little hot glue on there. And we'll stick that right, right on the front, just like that. So basically you can just be very creative and kind of just make up these little, little signs or little tags like this. 
Um, so there's one. We have this one right here, which I want to do something with this one. I was thinking maybe some of this netting would be cute on the back of that one. So I'm just going to cut a little cluster of this netting. I'm just going to put um, just a little bit of Fabrifix all over the back. Like that. And then I'm going to take and kind of spread open my netting here. And I wanted to set it down in that Fabrifix. But I want some of it to kind of pop out the sides a little bit. What's nice about this netting is you can glue it down and then you can kind of play around with it and pull pieces out and you know move it around the way you like. I just want a little bit of something kind of popping out the back like that. Now I might also put something down the front here. Do a little strip of this silver. What if we put just a little bit of silver at the front bottom? Sure, let's do a little silver at the front bottom. I'm just going to do a full piece. I'm not going to pull the plies apart on this one. And we'll do that right across the front. I like when I'm doing projects, um, especially vintage inspired projects, I like to use a lot of sparkle because they used a lot of sparkle back in the mid-century, 50s, 60s, even 70s, and there was a lot of sparkle. So I like to add the extra sparkle to all of my projects if they're this style. All right, what else do I have? I have the tickets, I have the little cat, Let's see, let's do, let's use some of this pipe cleaner for my little cat. Um, and let's just line him with the pipe cleaner. Just like it's his fur. So I'm just kind of bending it to about his size, like that. Perfect, I'm gonna use the hot glue for this. And we'll just put some hot glue on the back. We'll take that pipe cleaner, just set it down in that hot glue. All right, so there's our cat. And then I just have a couple more little tickets, a ticket, and then I have these little treat box covers. All right, so I have this little orange ribbon with black polka dots. I'm going to take a couple of these little bits and bobs here, and I am just going to create almost like a little backing for these. And I'm going to use my pinking shears to cut this ribbon so it has kind of like a jagged edge. And I'm just going to use that kind of on the back. Okay, so what I'm thinking is I want to kind of glue these. I almost want to make like a little cluster. So I'm going to glue my paper onto my ribbon. But I'm also going to layer it up a little bit. I'm going to take some of this netting. I'll use my, my pinking shears for this too. I'm just going to cut a little bit of this netting. Now you can kind of make these clusters ahead of time. You can make a bunch of them ahead of time and then just put them together in this little kind of bouquet like we're doing today. Uh, because the clusters you can use for lots of different things. You could um, use them in your journal. You could use them in hidden paper clips. You could make bookmarks with them. I like this. I think this is cute almost like a little cluster, something like that. I think it's very cute. So yeah, let's start gluing some of these together. So all I'm doing is I'm layering up some of the ribbon, some of this um, sheer netting that has the gold um, spider web on it. So I'm just gonna put a little fabric fix on there. I'm gonna stick my netting into that fabric fix 
could even do something else on top of it. I could do another piece of ribbon or something else. This Halloween Crafter Square ribbon, I've been collecting all different ones. Every time, every season, um, I, I always grab these from the Dollar Tree. And so I have like bins with all different seasonal uh, ribbon that I use. So let's see, let's take a little bit of this and let's just make a little, a little tab here. I'm literally just kind of gluing pieces together, like layering up some pieces. Not really any rhyme or reason, <laughs> um, just to kind of make this like layered cluster, if you can see here. And then this one I think we'll just put on the back, I mean on the front, just like that. The glue I'm using is Fabrifix. I will list this in the description of this video below. This is my favorite crafting glue. It's great for fabric. It's great for paper. Um, it doesn't pucker your paper and make it um, ripply like water-based glues do. However, this does have a little bit of a scent to it. So if you don't like that kind of acetone scent, um, you know, you might not like this, but I, I don't, this one's not too bad to me. I feel like it's not as strong as Fabri-Tac. Fabri-Tac is a little bit stronger. This one I don't think is as bad. So that is my favorite glue that I use. All right, as you can see, here is my little cluster. I just have a little bit of, you know, fabric sticking out, a little ribbon sticking out on one side, something sticking out on the other. I could actually add something else to this, like a couple little buttons okay. or something. I found this really cute little black ornate vintage button, which I think is gonna look really cute kind of just on the front of this little cluster. And now I'm gonna hot glue this. Stick that right down there like that. I always find that like layering things up just gives a little added dimension to something and a little bit more interest to the item that you're trying to make. All right, so there's another one. So what do I have? I have about four of them already. I'm gonna finish up these last two and I'm gonna kind of just do the same thing, make kind of like clusters, layered clusters with these last two. All right, so I am still working on these little clusters. Um, I just wanted to show you that on this one, I decided to bend this ticket up a little bit and I'm using just like an end of um, a bone folder, but you could use like a pencil or a pen and I'm just kind of curling one side and then I'm kind of doing the opposite and curling the opposite side so that it like curls up like that so there's like a little bit more dimension on that one and then I'm going to glue this I'll put some glue right here on the back and we'll just kind of glue the bottom down here so that the top kind of pops out like that so it's a little bit more 3d so let's see what ones have you not seen we did this one I did this one right here this was the little trick-or-treat um, Halloween kisses. This one I just did another little button, some little tinsel, just another like cluster, very similar to this one. This one I just put some tinsel just on the top, the Beware of 31. Um, and then we've got this one right here, which I just took a ribbon, folded it in half, glued it, and so I have like a folded it in half, folded in half ribbon with this kind of like ticket that kind of like pops out in front of it. So I've got a good selection of stuff here. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start putting these uh, or attaching these to my wire. Um, so I'm gonna take about eight inches, I think should be plenty, um, eight inches of the wire. And I do have some little wire clips here. So we'll just clip off of off our wire and then if you have pliers or you can just use your fingers or something but I'm going to use some pliers I'm just going to take one of the ends and just kind of turn the ends into like a little loop like that and I will pinch it kind of pinch it shut all I'm doing is creating a flat spot that this wire is going to be able to be glued to these little tags too. So I'm basically gonna, you know, attach it to the back of the tag like this with some hot glue. I just want this to be able to sit into the hot glue easily and not come undone. So we'll just put a little bit of hot glue on there like that. 
And then we'll take our little wire and set it right down into the hot glue. And we'll just hold it there for a second until it sets. Now we can cover this up with something. Um, if you wanted to take a little bit more of that garland, a little bit more of the garland here. We could just take another little clip of this garland. And we could actually kind of just cover that glue up with the garland just like that just so that it's not seen and now you have this cute little tag on a little wire pick so I'm gonna do this same thing for all of my little tags or clusters here we're just gonna put them on these little wire picks okay so I got all of my little clusters on wire and now I'm gonna take a couple of these little acrylic leaves um, and maybe a couple other random things and we're just gonna glue some wire to the back of these as well and just like I did with the other I like to just make a little loop at the top of the wire it doesn't have to be that big of a loop but just a little loop like this let's see it's just a little tiny loop just so that the glue has something to stick to I feel like if you don't do something like that it's really hard for the glue to stick um, to the wire itself so I'm just gonna put a little bit of the hot glue just on the back of the leaf and you can do it on the back of any type of little charm or something and then we're just gonna set that right down into the glue so now we have just this cute little leaf on a little pick as well so I'm gonna just do a couple of these I think I'll just do two and then maybe I'll do something else okay so what I've done is I've stuck all of my picks with my little clusters on them down into the top of my um, salt shaker into the little holes of the salt shaker. Now what I'm doing is I'm pushing them down. I made them long enough so that way they kind of stuck up high, but I'm pushing them down because the more I push them down, the sturdier they're going to become once they get down inside that glass or down inside that container. And I want these to be um, all facing one direction. I don't want them um, you know spinning around so if you kind of push them down the wire kind of gets tighter down inside the glass or down inside the container and it helps hold them in place a little bit better so i'm just kind of bending things around moving them back and forth um, getting them to how i want them to kind of sit if i was to sit this like on a buffet table or as a centerpiece or something but they kind of still kind of wobble around a little bit and look really cool Okay, so once they're kind of in there, I'm just going to leave them. I'm not going to glue them or anything like that. I want these to be kind of temporary. So that way, if I want to use them for something else, um, say next year, if I don't want to put them in the salt shaker, I can just take them out and use them for something else. All right, so I have this little Beware of 31 sign, which I think I'm going to um, just put right on the front of my little glass container here. Um, right across the front. I was gonna attach some ribbon to both sides, which that might look cute too. You know what, I'm gonna do that. Let's attach ribbon to both sides. Okay, so I just have a hole punch. I'm gonna just punch um, a hole on both sides of my little Beware of 31 ticket here and then we're going to get some ribbon or some um baker's twine I think i'm going to use this black and white baker's twine i'm going to take a good amount of it because i want to be able to wrap it a couple of times around this jar so i'm going to go in one side with one end and then I'm going to pull my other end and I'm going to go in or out through the other side with my other piece of twine. All right. So that way the twine is on the back and we've created kind of just a little um, tag like this. So I'm going to take my baker's twine and I'm going to wrap it around a couple of times. And then we'll turn it around and I'm going to tie it on the back, back here. Great. 
And then I'm just gonna move the Baker's Twine just a little bit from the front of this so you can still read the Beware of 31. All right, so now we have our little decoration. Just kind of shoving these back in place just how I want. As you can see, they don't bounce around. Um, they all stay facing forward. As long as your um, wire strips are long enough so that it gives them enough room to, once you shove them down inside the cap, because that wire doesn't really have as much place to go down inside. So there is one. I'm gonna work on the next two smaller ones here, and then we'll put them on my buffet table. All right, well, I finished up my little salt shaker decorative bouquets. I guess that's what we're calling them. I have one, actually I have all three of them here on my buffet in my dining room. Here is the larger one that we did with all of the little picks of things kind of popping out all over it. You could actually add in some decorative faux leaves or something like that if you'd like to. Um, I'm not going to do anything to this. I kind of just like it as is. So I have one here. I have another little one that I did down here that you can see that's a little bit smaller of a salt shaker. And then I have this guy right up here that I did. So all of the little tags and all of the little die cuts are in my Halloween digital kit that is in my Etsy shop with the exception of a few of the um, little tickets and things. A few of them are Patreon member only tickets, which if you join my Patreon, you can go ahead and get um, all of those from the Patreon. So go check that out. The link will be in the description below. But yeah, there they are right there, the three of them. So it just adds a little pop of Halloween color or fall color to your decorating. And it's just a really fun, easy thing to do with some salt, sh some salt or pepper shakers. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, make sure it's set to all, and we will see you again in the next video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.